Life is hard. <laughs> my life, anyway. Hell yeah, dude. I'm having a really hard time in my life, man. Yeah. It's, um... Look, man, it's just so hard to be white. <laughs> it's hard, dude. I Sometimes I have to put on sunscreen. I think that... Have you ever hear white people talk about it like that? No, shut up. That it, doesn't happen. It's so funny to hear, like, because uh, I think some white people, when they hear about it, if if anything bad happens to them, they're like, "Well, shit. Clearly, it sucks. It's not great to be white." Because the because saying it's better to be white or like it's <laughs> wow, I just think so. It's I'll, easier to be white yeah. implies to them that nothing bad ever happened. <laughs> right. So people, Man. I know that some mm. white people hear white privilege and they go, "Well, then how come I got fired?" Right, exactly. How come I, uh, why did I break my ankle then? Yeah. And it's like, well, because I think they were like, I was promised something good. Right. <laughs> so why is anything bad? Yeah. Yeah, or like saying that they have it on average better is implying that their pain doesn't matter yeah, or yeah. something. And I, you know, that's tough. That's a tough thing. But well, just... if Michael Jordan's faster, then why do he hurt his leg? <laughs> I do feel like people are too mean to Michael Jordan's high school coach. He didn't know. He didn't know Michael Jordan was going to be Michael Jordan. And Michael I Jordan, actually don't know this story. You don't know this? No. So this is what people always say. And I always hate when people do this example, like whenever they're like, the doctor said I'd never walk again. And the doctor's probably like, I didn't think you would. I'm, what the hell? It yeah, looks like dude. you probably wouldn't. But like they go, never. Don't forget, Michael Jordan's high school basketball coach did cut, didn't put him on the team, and it's because he wasn't good enough yet. Yeah, it's like totally. He, he, it's like Eight Mile. He he wasn't good enough, and then he got better, and then he became the best ever. And then everybody shits on his coach forever. He's a high school basketball coach. Yeah, it's like he he has a. It's a, one of his ten side hustles. He's like shit. Yeah, he's a science teacher. He grew a foot the next year. What the fuck? Yeah. Just in general, I really disagree with that logic with doctors. Like, obviously, there are doctors who, like, miserably fuck up at their job because yeah. everyone is bad at their job. But the idea that, like, someone died and that means that they did it on purpose and they did their <laughs> job wrong. Like, the person's in the hospital because they're about to die. Yeah. And then they die and you're like, this fucking doctor. That's what I hate because it's like, that's the same thing I th always think with police. I always treat the police just like I would treat anyone who has a gun because they Punch it's a guy with a Punch gun. Punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. And I treat a doctor as a guy with a knife. And you're like, hello, man with a knife. If I give you some money, will you try and cut out the the yeah. bullet? <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it's a guy with a knife. Uh, that's all. It, doctors are not magical. Sometimes you're dead and they shoot lightning into you to make you not dead. <laughs> <laughs> shoot him shoot him with some lightning. Get oh, the lightning box and shoot the guy. I do wish they were rednecks. I wish all right. doctors and I wish cops weren't rednecks. And I wish the doctors were. <laughs> you know what I mean? The energy of someone who's trying to save your life is sick in a redneck, dude. Yeah. Where's the Coors Light? I got to fucking, I got to fix this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse, beer bong me. This guy's, this guy's beer flat bong me. <laughs> Where's the whiskey? This guy needs help. That's like if the, if the South won the Civil War, that's what doctors would be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, dude! Got, this guy's got shot five fucking times. Hey, what y'all get into tonight? Damn! <laughs> Fuck, dude! Man, we need a guy with this motherfucker's blood type stat, dude. Dude, you know how funny? Like, I remember reading that it wasn't until like the 1920s or some shit when they started mm -hmm. washing their hands. When doctors washed their hands, oh, that's awesome. Uh, which <laughs> that's is very so funny. funny, dude. And they're like, we didn't know, and I'm like, you didn't know. You didn't know. You're a doctor. Like, you didn't know that putting dirt in someone's heart was bad? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? It's like if there's mm. fucking dirt and shit on your hand. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think you got to... Yeah. You washed it before you ate, right? You've never, like, fucked up <laughs> wiping your ass <laughs> and then noticed there was a little bit of shit on your finger? Like, if we're being real? Like, I'm sorry that that's gross. But, like, you've never done that? 
Everyone's <laughs> done that. And then you're like, God <laughs> damn it, dude. And you're like, oh, God, I guess I'm a baby. And I got to wipe the shit off my finger because I didn't put the paper in the right spot in my hand. <laughs> you're a doctor. And that's just what you see. That's how the doctor says when he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, what's the results of the scans? I was just in the bathroom. I got a little shit on my hand because uh, you know how you didn't judge the paper. Yeah, right. Everybody, uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't do it right. So anyway, that's in your husband's lungs. <laughs> <laughs> I put shit in your husband's lungs, and now he's dead. I'm so, man. That egg on my face, you know, <laughs> that's my bad. <laughs> You went into septic <laughs> shock. <laughs> that, that is the mob. I, that is my bad. I I put human shit inside your husband's body. And the human body does not like that. <laughs> Dude, I told you when I went I went to the doctor one time because I had a I had a mole on my back and it like tripled in size overnight and mm-hmm. it started hurting. Wow. And I was like, uh oh. Like Bitcoin. Yeah, like Bitcoin. <laughs> and then, so I go to the doctor and I go, uh, I, you know, I take my shirt off and I'm like, check this out. This looks like uh, all, you know, fucked up. <laughs> and the doctor's like, yeah, yeah, we'll have to take that off. And I was like, oh. So I'm thinking he's going, we're going to make an appointment. Mm. He just comes back and cuts it off. What the fuck? And uh, I was like, do I, am I going to like need stitches? And he was like, we could. what and then he just put a band-aid on it and i was like is it gonna bleed he goes it'll bleed a lot it'll bleed (laughs) Uh, tell me (laughs) and i was like it's gonna hurt it'll hurt and then uh he was like we'll call you and tell you if it's like cancer or whatever and uh this is just one of these la doctors that just didn't give a fuck what the fuck and he called me left a voicemail because i was doing a podcast and i checked the voicemail and he's like uh so uh it's benign (laughs) Dude, it was like a guy who who does like he drives for Uber and then he cuts off moles. Right. It was the most casual shit I've ever seen. And I you was know, just I like, do wow. think there is a version of that I really like. My doctor in LA before I moved, like the last two years, I got health insurance finally, and um, the guy was casual like that. But I mm-hmm. think like that guy sounds like an actual like fuck off. Yeah. But there's like a version of that slightly to the left of that that I think is really great, where it's like an old man who just kind of like is old so he hates everybody but he's like a really good doctor and this guy would literally like truly it was he was so cool man he was like uh i would like be talking to him and uh and he'd be like all right at the end of one of our sessions once he was like okay so here's what i'm gonna do you have to get these uh blood tests and uh you do them here and then they send them off to this lab and they cost a lot of money and I just really don't think that um, you should have to pay that. And I think those companies are just like run by these like pieces of shit people. So what you do is you just call me back. You just call my office and you tell them that I said that you don't have to pay for that. And then uh, they'll charge us. And then the insurance takes it off. What? And then like, I don't know. I think maybe I take a little hit, but it's fine. And I was like, what? And sure enough, I called and they were like, oh, yeah, he does it all the time. He's a really nice guy. And uh but That's he, incredible. he's also the same guy who was like talking about I was feeling constipated and I was. I was like <laughs> having this like bad bout of constipation where I was in like lots oh, of pain. No. And I was like talking about we were talking about farts. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, fun. Yeah. And he was like, well, the farts smell really bad. And I was like, I guess not really. And I was like, yeah. So it, I, it's I guess it's just gas. And he was like, well, farts are swallowed air. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. All farts are you swallow air and they go. In. Farts aren't created by shit. And he's like telling me this. And I was, what? I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah. It's just like we swallow air throughout the day. And then if your body is having trouble processing it, it can be a blockage. But it's really just swallow air. The farts themselves don't smell bad. It's the it's the shit around them. And uh, and I was just like the way that he was describing it to me. There's something about it. The casual nature of him just being like. I like almost didn't believe him. It's like, did you make that up? Are you fucking well, with me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I always knew. I guess I kind of always knew that. But it's just it's it's a burp that's coming out of your ass. So it's going to smell bad. It was just right next to shit. It passed all your shit and got out of your ass. Yeah. Right? I was trying to tell him I sleep uh, with my ass in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and have you seen Clockwork Orange? I do that to my butthole. The thing they do to his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually think that. That's not what farts are for me. 
Yeah. I think they're, well, I guess they're swallowed air, but they're like swallowed through my ass. <laughs> Welcome to Billionaires Are Good, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Billionaires Are Good, everybody. We were uh, just talking off air. Yeah. <laughs> that was off air, right? <laughs> I'm Dave Ross. I'm Caleb Sinan. I'm at Dave to the Ross on the stuff. Yeah, and I'm at Caleb Sinan on the stuff. That's uh, S-Y-N-A-N. Yeah, that's right. Uh, follow at Billionaires Pod on mm-hmm. X. At Billionaires Are Good on Instagram, billionairesaregood.com. And on there, there's links to our Discord and to our Patreon. And uh, if you want more of us and uh, more discussions of um, what I do with my asshole when I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have a completely separate Patreon podcast that's mm-hmm. a lot of fun called Moon News. Moon News. Where we discuss the news of the moon that week. That's right. And there's and, there's way more than you think going on. Especially lately, dude. Yeah. yeah. It is popping off. On the yeah. Moon. Everybody's dude. trying to go. Everybody's trying to go, and it's like hard for some reason. Yeah, but it's SpaceX. Way up there. You see that SpaceX fucking caught a rocket? You see that? Wait, what do you mean caught one? So like the was a rocket up to something? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was forging checks. <laughs> <laughs> a rocket with a little disguise on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was oh, like spy <laughs> versus spy. <laughs> it was just like a missile, like robbing a bank, <laughs> wearing a little striped outfit. <laughs> that's where it's going stealing cookie that's cereal where it's going um, one of these tesla robots is gonna rob a bank once it gets sentient you that's know? right dude um have you seen by the way that like i got my first ad on something online uh that was like the best ai porn site what and there's like porn sites now oh no. that or you can like talk to an AI. Mm, call me old fashioned. Man. <laughs> yeah, but I like to fuck people. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite kind of. <laughs> but you know, that's what people always say is like, is porn ethical? Because there's all these. Uh, sure, you know. of course. Yeah, but yeah. then it's like, but if it's AI, right? Is it even porn? Yeah. What is it at this point? Wait, what were we talking? Oh, the rocket. Dude. Yeah, the rocket. Uh, no. So like, one of the biggest barriers to uh, going to Mars is that they need to be able to come back, right? Right. And it takes years to get there. So they need to be able to land a rocket upright on Mars so that it can take off again. Whereas, like, normally, when they land... uh, Like, on the moon, it doesn't matter as much because the gravity is so low that they can just use regular thrusters to kind of pop up. And then they, like, connect. And then there's, like, not really as much of an atmosphere and so it can connect to the the thing that's been orbiting the moon uh but they have to like be able to shoot a rocket off the way that they do here uh but it has to land there first so they had like their first success catching a rocket uh standing straight up and the thing is that like it's not this not totally there i don't think because the mechanism is uh we had to build the mechanism to catch it but it's a good sign Wow! Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I I still don't totally understand. Neither do I. How I get how a rocket takes off, but once you're out of the atmosphere and you're in space where there's no matter, yeah, I don't understand how, how a propels thruster, forward. Yeah, I don't get that. Well, I do think that like it's mostly air, right? It's just pushing air out, and the fact that it's pushing makes right. you go the other way. Hmm. Yeah. That's wild. That's so crazy. I didn't even understand that they had to come back. I thought the idea was we're just if you're going to Mars, you're going to Mars. We're starting over on Mars. I will say, like, have they asked astronauts if they would do that? Because I feel like if you're an astronaut and they're like, you're going to be the first person on Mars, you just have to live there until you die. You'd be like, I'm in like immediately. Right. Or I just would. send Neil Armstrong again. Right. If they let he's going to die like, soon anyway. If they're like, Dave, we're going to send you to Mars, but you have to die there. I'd be like, can I bring Allie and the dog? <laughs> and if they said yes, I'd do it. <laughs> you'd you'd want to download a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah, for, dude. For, for your iPad. Yeah, can I have an MP3 player? <laughs> <laughs> you actually have your Desert Island albums. You have to be like, all right. Dude, literally NASA's like, you can bring your girlfriend and your dog. <laughs> ten you can albums. Bring, and ten <laughs> albums. What do you bring? Because if you bring Sp- Spotify, if Spotify's down, you just don't have music, dude. Damn, that's you know? true. Yeah. Because mm. Spotify will, lo- sometimes it won't even play the shit I downloaded. And I'll I go, I, but I downloaded it. I fucking downloaded this. Where is it? You fuck. Oh, I'm suspicious of Spotify. Dude. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. How uh, I think the hardest part about Mars would be no Spotify. So you got your 10 albums, you got your 10, what are your 10 movies? What Mars are my- movies. 
What's that? You get 10 Mars movies. Okay. 10 Mars movies. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Sucking a Black Guy's Dick 2. <laughs> <laughs> These are feature films released in theaters, Dave. I don't know what kind of theaters you're going to. <laughs> Okay. I yeah. think you do know. <laughs> I, I, I think you know exactly what theaters I go to. Yeah, that's true. We go to the the ones that you see on the corner. That's a good point. Okay, so ten movies to watch. They're the only ten movies I have to watch until I die. Yeah, you get ten. So they have to be these movies that I'm like really love rewatching for mm-hmm. sure. Man, that's interesting. Um, like what are? It's funny because like I don't think that they would. Those would be my favorite movies. There would be the movies that feel like comfort food. Like, you know what's one of my most rewatched movies? Is The Day After Tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah, I just love that movie. And it's not great. It's good. It's Yeah, fine. there's some movies you love yeah. the way you love a friend, where you're like, they're not one of the top ten human beings to ever live, but, but they're, they're my love them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. They could brush their teeth more. And Day right. After Tomorrow could definitely brush its teeth more. Mm. It's that kind of... Yeah, okay, Fuck. I'm also not as much of a movie guy as you, so it's tough for me to think. Day After Tomorrow. Yeah, let's say Day After Tomorrow. Uh, Porky's. Porky's, for Dukes sure. Dukes of Hazard. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Scarface, <laughs> the first half only. Uh, Godfather 3. <laughs> uh, Superman 4. <laughs> is that the one? Is that the quest for peace? Uh, there's one yeah, of that's the, the one where he becomes really like bad. a dark Superman. He becomes like a oh, shitty no. Superman. That's who- <laughs> always a mistake. It's a mistake with Spider Man. It's a mistake. Yeah. With- Emo Spider Man is one of the worst decisions in the history of movies. I think. But you know, this was also not lo- late enough in history. It was made in the late '80s or mm-hmm. some- your early '90s. So emo wasn't like a known thing. So shitty su- Superman wasn't emo. He was just like a dirtbag. Shitty Superman is and he funny. Just, he just like would go to a bar and have a five o'clock shadow and be like, what are you looking at? It was <laughs> yeah, it would like so, punch the wall. It's so easy for Clark Kent to be <laughs> bad. He's so clean cut. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just, you just, just wear jeans. <laughs> yeah. You just make him look like my father. And he's like a, <laughs> the biggest supervillain of all time. Okay, yeah, what are my other movies? Um, <laughs> Barton Fink. Barton Fink. Oh, really? I do like no, Barton no. Fink. Okay, being totally real. Let me see if I can do this quickly because uh, I'm having trouble thinking of movies. But, like, directors I really love. I think I would want a Coen Brothers movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but which one would I pick? I think it would be Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love that That's movie. That's the Coen Brothers? Yeah. Oh, no, wait. That's Wes Anderson. Oh, wow. Wait. Yeah, that's Wes Anderson. Yeah, that's Wes Anderson. Right, right, right. But that would be one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Director TBA (laughs) on Fantastic Mr. Fox. I'm trying... I think Fantastic... Because that one I've rewatched I've never seen Fantastic Mr. Fox. Really? Dude, I love Wes Anderson, but I also feel the way a lot of people feel about him where he's like, I get it. I get his sensibility and I don't need to see it all the time. But his animated movies are... are, Animation claymation is perfect for what he does. Wow. Okay, I'll check uh, it out, dude. You should, and it's also a Raul Dahl book, so uh, okay, it's really good. And the main guy is George Clooney. I like that guy. And uh, yeah, so Fantastic Mr. Fox. Wow, I did not expect that. That is a really funny one. Yeah, but I love that movie. Um, and then in the Coen Brothers, I think Big Lebowski. I just think it would I- be really funny if you said another Wes Anderson movie. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay, yeah. The favorite Cohen brother, Fantastic Mr. Fox. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, that, that's Wes Anderson. Okay, great, 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 great. okay. Now, for sure, favorite Cohen brothers movie, uh, Apollo thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Dave just thinks the Cohen brothers. That's what Made movies every are. Moody movie I liked. <laughs> yeah, Pineapple um, Express. Gravity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what would definitely be Children of Men, dude. That's one of oh, my favorite wow. movies by far. Okay. I love that fucking movie. Uh, that is a good one. Fantastic Mr. Fox, Big Lebowski, Children, Children of, of Men. Men. This is not what you thought it was going to no, be. No, but these are great. <laughs> Day After Tomorrow. Day- <laughs> for sure, dude. <laughs> Need that one in there. Steel Magnolias. Are you serious? I love Steel Magnolias. This dude. is insane. When I was a kid, my parents had Steel Magnolias on VHS, and I never told anyone because I thought everyone... Uh, at my school would punch me in the face right, and call right. me gay because that that's is a how good the movie. 90s was. It's but a good it's movie. so good, it's so funny. Makes you cry. And it's also like, 
I'm also trying to think like I want a diverse array of styles and sort of like vibes of movie if mm-hmm. I'm only going to have these for the rest of eternity. Right, right. Um, so, ah, uh, what up? The Rock. Uh, wow. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. I love The Rock, dude. I'm definitely hanging out at your little hut on Mars. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I'm going to pick a different tin so that we can... <laughs> oh, absolutely. You, know, if I, you can come over to my place and we can watch uh, <laughs> Jason 6. Uh, all right, and then the last four, the three Lord of the Rings movies and the second Hobbit movie. <laughs> <laughs> See, my list, you always... like. That's what I always hate. Uh, I, I love making lists. Oh, wait, my, no, no, no. I'm going to amend that. I actually mean that with the three Lord of the Rings movies because I think they're completely rewatchable. Yeah, and they're so much fun. And uh, the last one, I'd say, um, oh fuck, I just um, uh, Avengers Endgame. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, dude. It's just such a spectacle, dude. The other day, I watched uh, Infinity War and Endgame in the same night, dude. So much fun. So it was just six to midnight. (laughs) I didn't plan to. I just, I was like, I'm gonna throw on. Infinity War, and I'd only seen both of those once. So rewatching it, within thirty minutes, I'm like, I'm finishing this, and then, and then as <laughs> yeah. soon as it's over, I'm like, well, I'm starting in game right now. And man, I was, and I, I mean this, if if days had thirty hours in them instead of twenty four, I would watch Avengers <laughs> in game and Infinity War every day, dude. It is it's the best shit. You can't make me happier than that. What's cool about it, too, is that Infinity War is a completely classic, like, regular action movie that is, you know, with all the money and fucking spectacle and a very well-made version of that with all the explosions and superheroes and just... And it's like a perfect arc. But then they lose. Yeah. And Spoiler. Uh, yeah. If you yeah. haven't seen the most famous movie. <laughs> and then Avengers Endgame is crazy because at the beginning, for the first, like, hour, everyone's sad as yeah. fuck. And it's just this weird, creepy, like, they don't know what they're going to do. Everyone's upset. They're not friends anymore. Thor is fat. Thor's fat. (laughs) Iron Man's skinny. It's so (laughs) crazy. And then they, like, kind of, like, hatch a plan and figure it out. And then they have to go back in time and, like, hide from themselves that they're oh, doing. It's just so it's great. like a really weird movie, honestly. It's like a yeah. bizarre. And then It's really funny, too. It is it is funny, yeah. Man, uh, I forgot how funny it was. Thor keeps calling the raccoon a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they find a way to make Thor mm-hmm. so relatable. And, like, they, they really do the comedy and then the sadness of Thor in a perfect. It's just done perfectly. Yeah. And, uh... I just I think it's incredible, and I love the time travel. The you know Ant Man is just the perfect guy to to guide them through the totally the thing. And uh, yeah, it's cool to highlight man. him. And uh, Spider Man is a big part of it. Yeah, which he's not really a big part of it in Infinity War. I don't think. Yeah, he dies. But uh, in, yeah, oh, that's in, right. In game right. though, it's just it, that one two punch is just un. It's the best like six hours of Marvel. It's it's totally. It is like you know I. I've done a lot of saying that I like Marvel movies and I actually don't really think that's true because I re- have rewatched some and then I've like watched the new ones and I just kind of like those two. Yeah, they're and they're really good. There's some they're it, very very good. Like the Iron Man movies are a lot of fun. Those are like regular Michael Bay movies basically. But really a lot of them are just like tr- the same movie. Yeah. Yeah. And they all do this it's almost like a tribute. It's like Hey, we know the kind of Marvel humor you like. We know the kind of Marvel action you like. And don't, don't these look like hot people? And yes. you're like, uh, yeah, that is technically, that's a Marvel movie. But it kind of feels like a tribute to one. And it's like Infinity War and Endgame are just like lights out, perfect. Like, totally, dude. You know. Yeah, especially at the end. Like, I just wish they would have ended it all. Like, obviously they can't because they, yeah, the people money. in charge made money. so much money. And those people are dog shit and they hope they die, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. and uh, <laughs> But, man, to just end a franchise, to be like, bam, we did it, yeah. and then move on and make a new thing, that would have been so great. And now there's going to be a new uh, Captain America movie with Anthony Mackie as Captain America, and he is and, the worst yeah. Captain America. That dude... It's Papa Doc. He's always <laughs> going to be Papa Doc to me. He's never not exactly Papa Doc. He and stands I think he's still, a good Papa Doc. He's a good sure. Papa Doc, but, yeah, but Papa Doc is a dumb character, yeah. and uh, his real name's Clarence. And then Harrison <laughs> Ford is Red Hulk. Why is the Hulk red? Yeah, I don't understand why the Hulk's red. Wait, Harrison Ford is Red Hulk. Yeah, wow. 
I don't know, man. Weird. I don't know how I feel about that. No, I mean, I just really think they should have. Did you watch the Falcon and Winter Soldier show? No, no, I've never watched a Marvel show. The shows are especially bad. And it's that one's weird because Sebastian Stan is like a noti- noticeably good actor, mm-hmm. and Anthony Mackie is a noticeably horrible one. <laughs> and look, I'm sorry, like I, I'm sure that there's been things the guy's good in. Uh, I don't like at this point. I kind of feel bad saying someone sucks because I make stuff, and I don't want people to say I suck. So I think I've probably seen things he's been good in, and I'm forgetting. But specifically in this role, I think he is just so bad at it. And uh, Sebastian Stan is, like, very naturally just being a person. Yeah. And Anthony Mackie is this, like, robot guy who's like, we should go over there and throw my shield. And it's like, <laughs> God damn, dude. This is terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> we ought to do the Anthony Mackie report. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I wish he weren't in anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess uh, he does work as Papa Doc. But I, I, maybe that's just the age I was when I saw him, that he's always going to be Papa Doc in my head. But, yeah, you know. He seems like a, a nice guy, you know? You know, I agree, and I could talk about this forever, but I think that we need to talk about Mark Cuban, buddy. Oh, the billionaire of the week. I know you've been week, wondering. Dude. It's Mark Cuban. It's fucking Mark Cuban, One dude. of the top five sharks from Shark Tank. Uh, uh, also, fun dude. maybe my favorite billionaire. He's fun. He's, he's unexpectedly, uh, but he also, like, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be like, why are you saying a bunch of things I want to hear? So that's the thing. I don't trust it either. Yeah. I don't think that you get a pass from hoarding money in a world where people are dying just because yeah. you're funny <laughs> at all. Yeah, the funny helps, but it's still like a trick, I guess. But it's like, he, you know about his drug company, Yeah, right? so that's amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. It's called Cost Plus Drugs. Yeah, I think it's called Cost Plus. And, uh, yeah, no, I was reading all about it. And, no, I, I also don't think – I shouldn't have said funny. Like, I, I don't – I still don't think he's giving away enough money for him to be considered a completely good guy. Yeah. And, like, you know – And he uh, didn't give any to me. Yeah, he didn't give any to me. Which would to, help me change my mind. I also – whatever. I'm not, like, going to sit around and shit my diaper about it because I know that we live in a capitalist world. Yeah. So fine. He's the better version of it. Maybe I don't get it. Maybe when you're in that position, you're like, you look at things and you're like, fuck, there's nothing I can do to do to help. I'm going to buy a fucking million and a half dollar bulletproof limousine, which is true. What? The, the tires on his car are bulletproof. The tires? <laughs> yeah, dude. Isn't that insane? Wow. So <laughs> yeah. that means there was a billionaire who was like, I love my bulletproof limo. And then someone shot his tires out and he's like, that's like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Well, I think the logic is if you're getting shot at, you want to continue to get away. Yeah. How much are a bulletproof tire? Tires are not, uh, regular ones. It's a Maybach. A it's not even really a limo. It's just like a little bit of a longer Mercedes. Mm. And uh, and it's and the tires are bulletproof. So I think it's probably really expensive. It was one point five million the car. Wow. Um that's but for him he's he's really rich. He's like four or five billion, something like that. I actually didn't he's look up it up. There. What is he uh at? He's right like now? uh I I'm pretty sure it's around five, four or five billion. Uh I think he's a little richer than Trump, or maybe a little poorer than Trump, but he's around that area last time I checked. But he's one of those where his net worth will go up or down a billion every day. You know? Right. Five point seven billion yeah, right yeah. now. And uh he also does I, I just gotta be honest, I Love Shark Tank. I'm one of those people where I'm glad I never watched The Apprentice because maybe it would have made me love Trump. I don't know. Uh, but if you watch Shark Tank, you just love them. Yeah. They show you them being funny and awesome yeah. and they look great and they look cool. And then they show you, you know, each shark every every other episode gives a kid, a, an actual child, like a million dollars <laughs> to make their a fucking lemonade stand. Right. And uh, it just makes you your heart warm. Totally. And... Uh, Mark Cuban's always like nice and like Mr. Wonderful will be like, get out of here. You're an animal. I'm going to crush you like the cockroach. You. And he's like being like an mm-hmm. asshole billionaire. And Mark Cuban's always like, you don't talk to him like that. You don't talk to him like that. And you, it just yeah, makes you great. love him. No, truly. And, you know, honestly, yeah, I absolutely. It makes me love him. And he does other cool shit. Like yeah. his drug company is is truly amazing. And I I guess I just sort of wish that the feeling amongst people who made a lot of money was that the right thing to do is to just like fully give it away. Yeah. But then I suppose for the sake of argument, 
he couldn't do this if he was giving it all away. And why would he trust other people to give it away? Right. So maybe, you know, because the drug company, what they do, I was like reading about it. And uh, you can. So there is the the best example of the way he's helping people is that there's a, leuke- a leukemia drug that is market price two thousand dollars a bottle. Jeez. And you can buy it from his company for seventeen dollars a bottle. And that's I'm, pretty good. I'm gonna fuck up the the way that it works here, but it's like there's the manufacturers and they sell it to wholesalers, and the wholesalers sell it to uh, pharmacies, and the pharmacies sell it to you. But then there's also this other middleman, the insurance companies, and the insurance companies are like, uh, we want to make this more affordable, and we want to make money, so we'll buy it from you at a certain rate if you give us a rebate. Mm-hmm. And then the rebate is a percentage. So if they're if they mark it up further past that to the consumer, then they make more money. And it's cheaper for them than buying it direct, like buying it full price. So in their minds, everybody wins. But so in this case, uh, that two thousand dollar leukemia medication is six hundred dollars a bottle through insurance on average. Right, right. And you, Mark's company, you. You can't, you can't use insurance to buy from them because they go around the insurance companies mm-hmm. in order to sell direct from the factory. And then they have some small markup so they can function as a company. Yeah. And uh, so they sell, and that's how they somehow got that fucking drug down to $17 a bottle, which means that you're saving $583 if you don't use insurance. Yeah, and, uh, it's, insane. Like the problems with it are, you can, they can only do generic drugs. They can't do designer drugs because right. those are, I don't know, cost more to make or whatever the fuck. They sell them for more from the manufacturer, and uh, they're tr- that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get into selling uh, designer drugs, and so it's like obviously really helping people. Yeah, it's like really amazing. You know no, what else I he like did that. that I really like? He bought Democracy dot com because Trump said he was going to buy it. <laughs> And he was like, fuck that. <laughs> that's very funny. Yeah, dude. No, I love that that's, even when you're a billionaire and you're super powerful, you're still like, oh, it's going to be funny. I want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also said, he was like, these fucking fascists like, yeah. are like lying to, to you about what democracy is. And he doesn't want Trump to be able to do that with democracy.com. Yeah. And the logic there is a little flawed. It's a little boomery because it's like, who the fuck is being like, what democracy? Democracy Democracy.com. And then, (laughs) I mean, who's operating that way? It's not that many people, I hope. I honestly, in the last few years, my my opinion of like the general, you know, we do comedy and shit. So like even sometimes I'll be like, this is a good crowd. Like, the average person is very stupid. Yeah. Like, very, very stupid. Like, uh, yeah. so I think there might be people that are like, well, let's go to democracy.com, see what's going on with democracy. <laughs> yeah, Kurt Brownler has a joke about this, how he's like, he's given up, and he just buys products by typing in what he's looking for, dot com. <laughs> and he's just like, I got this belt from belts.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, it's also like, dude, you got, I'm not going to deny someone who made a lot of money, the opportunity to have fun with their money. I mean, like we, if we're in capitalism, you got to have some fucking fun, dude. Like, what are we doing? If we don't, he bought a town called Mustang. That's true. It was a ghost town and he bought it. It's called Mustang, Texas. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's going to be, he's, I, he can't make up his mind. He's either going to turn it into a dinosaur town or a horror town. That's true. What? Because he bought like a like a horror company, like a haunted hayride and haunted house company. He's like, maybe I'll make a whole town like scary. <laughs> or oh, this is a movie. This is like <laughs> I know. a billionaire buys a town, tries to make it scary. We then, bought a oh, town. Shit. Yeah, dude. And then it gets scary. It actually is everybody scary, yeah. dies. <laughs> yeah. It's a movie called Everybody Dies. I would watch Everybody Dies. So would I. Sounds fun. How has that not been a movie? Has that been a movie? Uh, everybody dies. Everybody mm-hmm. dies. That's a good That's title. A good name. We yeah, should. Dude. We should cut this out. And make everybody dies ourselves. Yeah, we should call our podcast "Everybody Dies." All right, we're changing the name. Yeah, dude, changing it again, dude. 
So I give um, Mark Cuban a, a tentative thumbs up, right? Yeah, good. Th- as far as billionaires go, it's hard go. to thumbs up a billionaire, but also billionaires are good. All right. of them. All of them are. God, good. they're fucking good. So uh, uh, I, you know, I say he's the billionaire to beat so far. Uh, okay, that's true. And yeah, uh, while we're talking about dinosaurs, by the way, did you know that Doug Emhoff's favorite dinosaur is a Triceratops? <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug facts. Doug facts. I actually did know that. Oh wow! Yeah, he went. He said that on sixty minutes. <laughs> They were like, yeah. how's, how's the campaign been going? And he was like, you know, that that reminds me. Doug Facts. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a bunch of Doug Facts. Oh, yeah? yeah? Dude, yeah. big Doug Facts day. Let's All go. All right. We got uh, once a week, Doug starts Mission Impossible 4, half, and halfway through, he's like, ah, shit, I saw this one already. Doug Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, when Doug takes Kamala to Dave and Buster's, he says, whoa, what's that behind you? And then he takes one of her tater tots. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love that. That's a good one. Uh, the first time Doug went to the White House, he took a shit in the Lincoln bathroom. <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug facts. Doug facts. <laughs> in 2018, Doug got super into crypto and lost $600,000 starting Doug coin. Doug facts. Doug facts. Doug, Doug facts. Whenever Doug buys a book, he reads the last page just in case he dies. Doug, 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 Doug facts. Doug facts. <laughs> Just in case he dies. That's so funny, dude. Uh, at the White House Easter egg roll, Doug tried to do a black backflip and really hurt his neck. Doug facts. <laughs> Yo, I believe that. That sounds real, dude. Ah, I'm sorry, honey. I The kids love it when I flip. They love kids love flips, and I'm trying to show them what a flip is. And... Ah oh, shit! I'm I just, sorry. It's, Doug facts are so funny because you just <laughs> I just think of his face and that's all I just picture. What does this guy with this face do? Yeah, and I bet he tried to do a backflip on the way. Absolutely, floor. dude. <laughs> Heard his thing. Hey, uh, I got a question for you about Mark Cuban, dude. Yeah. My hotter than Sylvester Stallone. I think they mm. look exactly the same. They're starting to. <laughs> yeah. Dude. They're morphing into the same person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude. Yeah. They both got that. The head. Are, their heads are getting pretty square. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, that is that going to happen the, to us? The dyed hair. Uh, Do you think that we're going to be square head 60 year olds? I mean, once I'm 60, my head could be square, circle, whatever you want. You I know? actually don't think that's going to happen to you because I've known you for. Perfectly round head. 15 years. Yeah. Well, I would say you have a perfectly round head. Thank you. I, I would say that with each passing year, your head looks more and more like a white bowling ball. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I think it's just getting more spherical as you age. It was like egg-shaped when you were 19 and I met, and I met you. Yeah, it was a little eggy. Now it's, a, it's getting pretty... Now it's like kind of a flat balloon. <laughs> Little flat, a little bit flat balloon, like not a fully flat balloon, like a lo- like a little air has been let out. I do yeah. whenever I gain weight, I do gain it, and it makes my head a little more circular. Yeah, you I get gain like head weight, puffy cheeks, really quickly, like a little head chipmunk weight. head weight. I get that dude. head weight going. <laughs> it's a real bummer. Man, I'm gonna watch my head weight, dude. <laughs> dude, I gotta like, work my head I, out. I don't want those nachos. I'm going straight to my head. I gotta chew mm. a lot of chewy food to get my. Uh, to work oh, my muscles. face out, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. That's how you get a square head. Lots <laughs> of chewing, dude. Both Stallone yeah. and Mark Cuban eat a lot of beef jerky. Yeah, you got to get the, you got to chew, get your chewing muscles. Yeah, dude. Going. But yeah, yeah, him and Stallone are, uh, they're, I, they're the same person. Yeah, I would say so. Is this hotter than Ted Cruz? Yeah. Of course. I mean, yeah. uh, Ted Cruz is the worst looking person on Even earth. Even if you like Ted Cruz and you vote for Ted Cruz, you can't, you know, you don't want a picture of him in your house. Yeah, right? he looks like a tired old bird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he looks like? He looks like a high schooler playing Ted Cruz in a play where you're like, bad beard, bad makeup, <laughs> yeah, totally. bad fake nose, come yes, on. Everything's glued on. What is supposed to be Ted Cruz? <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's covered in xanthan gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Hell yeah. We're a couple of Tony Hinchcliffs over here yeah, roasting. Yeah, really taking him down a bit. We can roast you pretty Fuck good. Fuck you, Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah, I roasted so much. Now you're Red Cruz. Thanks a lot. I'm fucking awesome, you're a, you're a dude. You're good comedian. I'm a really fucking good comedian. I'm super funny, and I'm awesome. Yeah. I'm also... Not a lot of people fucking talk about this. I'm super good at sex, and I got a big old fucking dick, dude. Whoa. Yeah, watch out, man. And I got a big, big... Big fast red car, 
and I'm strong, and I can lift lots of weights all at once. I, I you got, dude, you're not gonna believe. I got, you know, I own more American flags than anyone else in the world, <laughs> and I got a big one <laughs> flying over my house. <laughs> I'm a big, strong guy with a big, strong dick, and I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just watch Dave have a psychotic break in the middle of an episode. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dave facts. Dave facts. I've never heard anyone say they have a strong dick before. I got a strong dick. It can lift other dicks. You put your dick on my dick, and it's going to lose. I remember, <laughs> so, you know, I was a preacher's kid, and I was homeschooled for a while, and so when I went to public school in the South, you know, you're just, you're hit with, like, people, and I remember in, uh, it was, I think it was the se- second grade was my first year of public school, mm-hmm. I just remember being like, oh my god, these other kids are crazy, and there's one kid, I think his name was Eddie, and uh, he, like, turns to me in second grade, and this is second grade, <laughs> you know, I'm seven, <laughs> I've been in school. I've been in public school for like thirty minutes. He like turns to me and goes, "Can you do a cock push up?" <laughs> Hell yeah! What was his name? Eddie something. Eddie. And I was wow. like, "What?" Eddie Murphy. And he's like, "Cock push up." <laughs> like I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's like it's where you, you're naked and you lay face down. You you do push up by like with your dick. <laughs> And I was like, no. And he's like, I can do one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Eddie. Damn, dude. And I believed him for a long time. And I'm like, I think that would break your dick. Uh, Man. But yeah, I was like, kids are nuts. Like public nuts. school kids. It's like, it's so Just crazy. looking for something to say. <laughs> it's like, like we're in the middle of learning. in the dark. <laughs> we're learning how to, how to add and divide. There was like a bunch of years where the way that I would get bullied would be by making up the definitions of words. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd be like, hey, Ross, you have a bike? And I'd be like, yeah, I have a bike. Like, a bike's a vagina. <laughs> a bike is a vagina, you fucking woman. <laughs> Dude, the first day of public school, I remember going to the bathroom, and I, I don't think I'd ever seen a urinal. I, I think that was like a new thing to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember somebody was like, hey, Caleb, pee in the, pee in the middle urinal. And I started peeing it, and they were like, that's the gay urinal! <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. And I was just like, well, you told... Uh, clearly, this I don't even know what this is. I don't know what gay means. I don't know... what This is a weird toilet in the wall. I don't know any of this shit. Dude, I, I remember one year, we had like... Remember the years where like... I don't remember why this happened, but sometimes... We would all like school would start and then we would all just like have to be in the gym Mm -hmm. for the beginning of the day. Yeah, we did, too. Yeah. And I don't remember why. Like maybe there was construction or like something had gone wrong or I don't don't fucking know. know. But there's just a policy. Yeah. Put them in the gym. Yeah. They just put the whole school in a gym. Like what a nightmare. Great idea. Feels like maybe it was an experiment. They were like, let's see what these kids do. If we trap them. You know, we did is we threw batteries at each other. (laughs) Yeah. That's the thing. It got bad right away. Oh, yeah. And I remember this one kid. I don't remember his name. And I didn't even know like most of the kids involved in this, but it became like a gym wide thing where these kids said to this one kid, uh, hey, man, are you a virgin? And then he reflexively didn't know what a virgin was. Oh, boy. And then he reflexively, because he thought they were making fun of him, he was like, no. And then so it spread like wildfire around the gym until we were all like, oh, you're not a virgin. You've had sex. And it was just so like. What? We were in fifth grade. So like everyone thought sex was bad, I guess. And then like the very next year, we were I just remember us all being like, I wish I wasn't a virgin. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny that there is a term. For having not had sex. Not having sex. Because yeah, what think are you be- once you have sex? What's the word? Radical. Because <laughs> if you're... I love that Jewish people, they have a word for themselves, which is Jewish, and then everyone who's not Jewish is a Gentile. Yeah, totally. So it's like you have virgin, but what's everyone who's not a virgin? Yeah, totally. You That's know? a good point. Fuckers? Uh, fucker. You're a fucker <laughs> now. You're a fucked. But I, I want to know what the term is. It's a funny, um, it's a funny thing. Very funny concept to me. Let's look that up. There's got to be a term, you know? I just want to know. (laughs) Oh, dude, it's going to say your mom. It's going to say your mom. Come on, Google. Well, you know Google's going to be. No. Oh, boy. No term. 
promiscuous, ah, uh, debaucherous, but that's not a noun. Yeah, but not everyone who's totally not a virgin is promiscuous. Then everyone who's married, you know, you only had sex with one person. You're prom- <laughs> it's not promiscuous. The opposite of a virgin is a non-virgin. Oh come on, I don't well, like that. Otherwise known as a person who has had sexual intercourse. Well, we do that. Comedians will call everyone who isn't a comedian a non-comedian. Yeah, that's true. Or which a, is such a funny term. Or what's the term? Civilian. Um, civilian, dude. That's which what is, it is virgins and civilians. It's, that's almost like that's almost disrespectful to be like. Being a comedian's kind of like serving in the army. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, Only we get it. <laughs> You're oh, a civilian. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I served in the uh in the heckler smash of uh <laughs> 2015. Oh, comedy uh. store was tough that year. <laughs> we lost a lot of good careers that year. A lot of people serving at the uh, Applebee's down the street nowadays. Oh, dude, I do love an Applebee's. I've been hitting up Applebee's in a, a lot of cities lately. Applebee's fucking rocks, dude. It does. You get served quick. It's busy, and they still sit you. I'll be like, oh, man, I'm going to have to wait. Nope. Do you know that every Applebee's in the country, every day of the week, has one drink that is $1? Yeah. It's great. It's crazy. You can eat like a king. It's cheaper than the grocery store. I love it. <laughs> I'm a big fan. And they don't, they're don't. they not like shitty about it either. They'll give you that dollar beer with a big smile and yeah. uh, ask you how your day's going. Totally. I'm Dude, a big fan. There's an Applebee's in Brooklyn in the Barclays Center. Well, not in the Barclays Center, but in the mall that's like next to the Barclays Center. And we got to go, dude. It's like right by the Target. And so I'll go to the Target sometimes and I'm always like, damn. There's no one in the fucking Applebee's because it's New York oh, City. Oh, dude, you remember we tried to go to this Applebee's like and a year ago. And it was closed. Well, it closed at 11 because no one goes to it. But not with that attitude. That's right. Keep well, it. It's New York City. Why is anything closed? I agree. Well, apparently since the pandemic, it's been hard because that was difficult or something. Uh, fucking I think it's a self-fulfilling lame. prophecy. I think you're right. I think you're right. Everything should be open all the time. In, this, in New York, at least. Yeah. New York, L.A., Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Applebee's. Do you want to be an Apple Bees or an Apple Can't? (laughs) (laughs) Dave facts, dude. We need a bumper for like, we need like a Tony Hinchcliffe bumper. We need like a a roast or or something like that. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. You suck. Dave said so. Or like get Tucker Carlson's laugh (laughs) and put it on a little loop or something. (laughs) Oh, his laugh. I don't know, what does he sound like? Oh, uh, dude, you just got to look at. I can't even mm-hmm. imitate it. It's a his laugh is. Uh, just assume nightmarish. he sounds like a like a weevil, like a shrew. I don't know what that is, but I'd say it's like a long close. rat. A long rat. God, I hate him. <laughs> Fuck, I hate him so much. One last question, pal. All Pearl. right. Is this millionaire hotter, hot, hotter, hotter than the dad from Frasier? I don't know about that because uh, the dad from Frasier is, uh, you know. For for that age totally. cohort, I don't know if I'm using that right, but I, I you know, that's a good looking man. It's a nice, no, nice absolutely, nice old he's a Papa, fat ass on that. Uh. <laughs> he's probably the same age as Mark Cuban now. Like, yeah, that's when true. he was playing that character. But no, uh, Mark Cuban's a handsome man, and I think that. But Mark their- Cuban also has billionaire face, though. It's like he's always looked this age. Yes, ten years ago he kind of looked a little old and a little young, and you're like, how old? You know. Yeah, and it's something you never would. Yeah. You, they like inject lizard cum into his cheeks <laughs> or some shit like that. Because he just always has looked like a little older and younger than the last year. Uh, yeah. Paul F. Tompkins has that great story on on the Laboring Under Delusions album about how he was in that movie, The Informant, mm-hmm. and near the oh, end of yeah, shooting, yeah. they brought in a little cube, and uh, Matt Damon ate it, and he was like, what? fuck is the cube <laughs> and then found out later that it was part of a cleanse but it was like right, a little right. blue gelatinous cube and it's shit like that for sure like there's just and it costs like three million dollars what to eat one i'm i'm making it up but i'm just saying like yeah yeah I'm there's sure. stuff that you and i don't know about because it would be impossible to afford that makes you right. able to look younger for sure like and I'm making that up, but I just am saying I think that that's definitely probably true. Yeah, I got to get some of them cubes. We need yeah, to get dude. them to sponsor billionaires are good. Yeah, well, we are billionaires. Yeah. I mean, we are, you know, we like billionaires. And so why don't the they want to be friends with us? Yeah, well, we're going to get there. Mark Cuban owns there. a bunch of houses, and one of them he never goes to, so he just lets his friend live in it for free. Really? Yeah. That's cool. It is cool. 
Man, I, I gotta like, get I gotta get a billionaire friend. Yeah, I know. How do you do that? I don't know. If you go, to, if you know any billionaires, hook us up. You yeah, know? Let, let us know, know about the pod. Dude. Uh, and speaking of Uh-oh. which, it feels like we're nearing the end of this episode of Billionaires Are Good. And so... What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Oh, 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 it doesn't even know what it's called. What's it called? What's it called? Hey, big shout out to Chris Cresswell, by the way. Hell yeah, I love Chris. wrote that song and wrote the Billionaires Are Good theme song. And I just... Um, I didn't get to hang out with him, unfortunately. I was at the fest... In Gainesville, Florida, always the best time ever. And uh, he was playing with two of his bands, Flatliners and Hot Water Music, two sets in two days. And so I didn't end up getting to see him because he was working so fucking hard. And then he left and his wife and he were celebrating something. Um, But anyway, I just wanted to say uh, shout out to that dude. He he does such great work. And uh, I love him so much. Very good songs. Such good songs. Uh, so this week, uh, our game was if Madam Webb was directed by Wes Anderson. So yeah. a lot of y'all hopped in on our ex uh, at Billionaire's Pod. Yeah, totally. And I mean, you guys are just so good at these games. Um, at Billionaire's Pod on X. And then we have a link, uh, an invite to our Discord on our website, billionairesaregood.com. And jump in there jump. and rename shit with us. We do it at the end of every episode. And we uh, it's really hard to come up with a top ten of our favorites because you're all so funny. But this uh, this week, coming in at number 10, if Madam Webb was directed by Wes Anderson, Who's Dan? I'm Dan on Discord said, the beautifully intricate designs of the Spider Woman. <laughs> it's very funny. I can really see these posters. Uh, Seth Mills on Twitter said, Mr. Wow, starring Owen Wilson. <laughs> Boneless Chuck on Discord with the clairvoyant escapades of helpful Miss Webb. <laughs> <laughs> she be Carly on Twitter said 50 shades of beige. Oh, dude, that's really funny. Very good. Uh, at Jemry from the pod on Twitter said Webbs Anderson. Perfect. That's great. Uh, Creed on discord said little miss Spunshine. Oh, shit. That's great. Ghost party on discord with lost in conception. That's brutal. That is, that's <laughs> yeah, a burn. Straight up mean, dude. Uh, Demurist on discord said the grand bullshit hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Go to OTAN on Discord with The Life Arachnid with Cassandra Webb. <laughs> oh, and I ricky shit this week. Larry Bellello on Twitter said, The Life Amazonian with the guy who was researching spiders with my mom just before she died. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all are the fucking best. Oh, very good. Thank you so very much. Very good. Do you know if Jeffrey Wright was uh, in Madam Ladies Webb? Ladies and gentlemen, the Jeffrey Honestly, Wright Honestly, I'm report. not sure. Me neither. Oh, here I we go. I think we should do a report. Wright report. <laughs> The Jeffrey Wright Report. The Jeffrey Wright (laughs) Report. All right, so he was not in Madam 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 Web. Web. uh, Um, He is in a lot of movies. He's in a lot of movies. Damn, dude, four out of ten on IMDb for this fucking movie. 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I don't really agree with Rotten Tomatoes a lot anymore. But only with what they say is good. What they say is really bad, I tend to agree with. Yeah, I mean, once you get under 30%, like, it's hard. You, you could always find someone. Like, that's one thing I don't like is sometimes a movie will have 90%. Yeah. And it's the most average kind of boring dog shit in the world to me. Yeah. But it's just like no one hated it enough to give it a bad review. And and they'll count even reviews that are lukewarm as good. Yeah. Uh, which I kind of disagree with. But uh, they were right. Madam Web is bad. But... I think there should be a different score for you will still and this is still worth your time because it'll be a fun night watching Madam Web because you will laugh at how stupid it is. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So there should be a, a a little button for so bad it's good or something like that, because that's one of the hardest I've ever laughed in a theater. Everybody it was killing. It was killing in the theater. It was packed. Everybody's laughing. It was a great time. Mm. Uh, I still haven't seen it because everyone says it sucks, but OK, I'll see it. Buddy, we should watch it. Uh, all right, let's watch it. That would be a fun night. Do you? Madam we Web. do have to go, but um, do you know what your top ten movies are? Ooh, the uh, movies that you would take to Mars. I mean, I your mean, Mars ten. Yeah, it'd probably be 
the three Lord of the Rings, the three Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, Indiana Jones. That's a good so one. So that's six slots. Yeah, damn. And then those uh, are really good ones. I would maybe amend mine to include Last Crusade because I just love that movie so fucking. Yeah, much. Last Crusade's my favorite too. Uh, yeah, and I guess the first Lord of the Rings is my favorite. I just mm-hmm. really love the the. I like the Shire a lot. Yes, yeah, and uh, I rewatched that one so much just because I like watching the Hobbits having a good time in the Shire. And yeah. That. And it's just fun as hell. That movie is... It's really fun. Whoops ass. The extended really version is so sick. It's yeah. It's really... All it, this... I don't get bored. It's yeah. like nine hours. I don't get bored. Totally. Uh, but yeah, I love The Last Crusade. I would probably put uh, It's a Wonderful Life in there just because it's like... Oh. Chris, it'll make you feel like it's Christmas on Mars. Oh, yeah. And it's, there's something about black and white Christmas movies that are just... Uh, they really take you to another Damn, that's world. interesting. Home Alone 2 does that for me. Yeah. It puts me in the Christmas spirit. I need the Christmassy movie... Yeah, I think it might um, be that. I own, that's like one of the few movies I own. I bought on iTunes a long time ago. So yeah. it's just in my a- Apple Music for some reason. I just have. Which is nice. Yeah. that's that, And that's forever. You yeah. Know? Apple you buy- Music is forever. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know, I guess I would pick, uh, I would want to pick something kind of stupid. I would want a stupid Ooh, movie. You know, like, yeah, I know. This is making me think I would want maybe... Uh, Tommy Boy or Dirty Work? Oh shit! Yeah, Dirty Two Work. Two of the funniest movies of all time. You know, Dirty, Dirty Work got bad reviews. Isn't that? Funny? Isn't that crazy? What is? What the hell's wrong with? Hey, people? Mildred, <laughs> dude, that movie is fucking. Maybe Naked perfect. Gun. I, oh, uh, something shit. just stupid. Airplane. Yeah, like I, I love those movies. There's like ten million jokes in those movies. I know. Uh, I don't know, but I really think I might do three Lord of the Ringses and three Indiana Joneses. And then uh, just like a dumb one. It's a Wonderful Life. It's one, so that's seven. And then mm, maybe Naked Wild Gun Things. Have you seen Wild Things? No. You just want something to jerk off to? Not really. It's really <laughs> not. Like, I rewatched it with my buddy Will in Atlanta because he'd never seen it. And there's only two sex scenes in it. Oh, yeah? It's no, just, I know. They did they get advertise a lot of it that way. Clicks. It's, more, it's really more of a mystery film noir fucking. It's yeah. an incredible movie. But there's more sex scenes. Yeah, you in, were telling uh, me this. I need to see it. It's yeah. great. It's there's some bad dialogue or or some bad performance. It's the '90s, whatever. But I think it's one of the best scripts. It's such a good mystery, and cool. uh, I love it. I think it's it's trashy. You got to be down for that. But uh, it's my favorite trashy movie I've oh, ever shit. seen. Cool yeah. man. Love Wild Things, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's mostly the, I, there's really those three Indiana Jones. The first three are like there's nothing better in the world. Yeah, they're unbelievably good. I agree. Yeah, and then maybe a Jason movie. I don't know. Oh, okay. I would want, I would want a horror movie, a straight up horror movie in there. I think we're already over ten, pal. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to, I have to, I have to look. I'll, uh, next episode, I'll be back with my official list. <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh, we only have one thing to do before we say goodbye this week. The Heroes beard update. Ooh, it is still there. The Ben Shapiro's beard update. We're going to have, this is going to be an evolving bit at some point. <laughs> One day he'll shave. Yeah, it's going to happen because every once in a while you absent mindedly, you accidentally, instead of putting the trimmer on, you, you have no guard. And then you're just like, all right, like, now I got to shave it. That's happened totally. to me. It happens to me every couple of years. Oh, so yeah. It'll happen to it's him. It'll be a big day. Yeah. Thank you all so much. You're the fucking best fans. We ever. love you. We love you. Lay it and down. We'll see you next time. Lay it down. Billionaires are. Good morning.